Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about Basel Accords. So what is Basel? Basel is a beautiful city situated in Switzerland and it is a city as well as headquarter of BIS that is Bank for International Settlements. BIS was established in 1930 and it's one of the oldest financial organization. In 1974, 10 countries, governor of central banks of 10 countries, they got together and they created a committee which is called BCBS, Basel Committee for Banking Supervision. And they started with some basic guidelines and how to mitigate the risk and uh, basically avoid uh, the risk in their, their local jurisdictions. That has expanded and there are 63 member nations in BCBS now. The entire list of countries uh, can be found on www.bis.org. So what was the objective of BCBS? BCBS committee offers a platform for ongoing collaboration uh, for the member nations and basically discuss on the supervisory affairs. The goal was to how to make the process robust within the country so we have lesser and lesser risk. And also we have a more you know, uh, banking oversight on the local jurisdiction. The committee also established the recommendation and benchmarks across various domains for effective banking supervision and also look into the cross-border banking oversight. Basel has three accords, Basel 1, 2 and 3. 3 is the latest one and the obviously the financial uh, stress and how to deal in, in event of financial stress is the primary focus of these accords. Basel 1 started with credit risk, which was a very primary concern when, when the banks, um, governors of central banks got together and that was a primary concern to deal with. However, Subsequently, there have been revisions done and there was an accord two and three as well. In order to better understand the risk, we need to understand the, the risk weighted asset that is RWA and CAR that is capital adequacy ratio. So what is risk weighted asset? In order to understand risk-weighted asset, we need to understand what is risk and how the balance sheet is created. So balance sheet primarily has the two sets of account types. One is asset and liabilities. So here we are talking about the assets because asset is something which uh, is with the bank or which uh, the loan which bank has given to other counterparties and that is treated as an asset because that's recoverable or that is that is going to return back in future in coming period of time there are many types of assets so cash is one of the asset we have similarly we have got government securities we have got housing loan we have got business loan we have car loan for example so assets are of very very different uh, natures and all assets have a different level of risk depending on the counterparty depending on the country the product type for example you may have home loan or car loan home loan is basically a secured loan uh, you have mortgage your house and you're paying a monthly installments and interest to the bank so bank is kind of safe because they they have ascertained the risk and they know that in event you fail, you can they can sell the house and recover the money. On the contrary, we can have business loans, we can have 
personal loans and these are kind of unsecured loan personal loan is unsecured loan business loan may or may not be secure or unsecure depending on how it has been set up so the point here is like all the all kind of products have different risk level associated to it right if personal loan is defaulted then it's a long process to recover the money right that may not meet the requirement in the financial stress scenario however if a mortgage payment is defaulted bank can liquidate and i mean you know, they can try to recover the money and if not fully the partially they can recover it quickly so all the central banks have published the list of products or, or instruments and what is the percentage of uh, risk associated with it it can be found out on the uh, central banks websites this is also called discounting or haircut for example in this scenario cash is absolutely zero risk which is kept with the bank so there is a risk weight of zero the government securities are treated as zero percent risk however housing loan is 30 percent risk and business loan is 100 percent risk that's just an example so for example a bank has assets of twenty dollar ten dollar forty dollar thirty dollar each which is concentrating to the total of hundred dollar However, since the first two cash and government securities doesn't have any risk weight, so it has RW as in zero. However, housing loan has got 35% of risk weight. That means if a bank has given loan of $40 here, you can consider it as in 40 million or 40 billion as well, but this is an example. Then the risk associated with this amount is $14 just 35 percent similarly for the business loan or unsecured loan it is 100 percent which is like the entire 30 dollar right there are guidelines uh, by the uh, bcbs as well as uh, uh, th these may be followed completely or partially or even be enhanced by the um, particular uh, nations uh, central bank so it is started with the eight percent so required car for example see let's get get back to the formula first so what is capital adequacy ratio so car is the capital total capital divided by the risk weighted assets right now bcbs says that you should maintain at least eight percent of car so in this particular example, they required if we need to make the required CAR is 8% and we need to divide the total capital divided by $44, which is basically the RWA and the percentage. So we need to have $3.52 kept aside and that should that basically should be the risk free it should be kept aside it's a buffer money so bank should not be touching in event of stress scenarios bank can take that money out and basically meet their uh, capital adequacy requirements so what is basel 1 basel 1 was issued in 1988 it primarily focused on the capital adequacy of financial institution to reduce the credit risk. It focused on the credit risk to start with. All the assets are classified in five risk categories broadly. That's zero percent. That's cash and um, the bank, uh, the government securities. What we have looked at, right? Then we may have different asset classes which are further classified in 10%, 20%, 50%, and 100%. With Basel 1, CER should be maintained at the minimum 8% as we have seen here. And this is the recommendation from BCBS. However, uh, some countries have uh, followed to 9% or 10%. 
depending on their local scenarios or depending how they want to regulate it. Let's go to Basel 2. Subsequently, after the Basel 1, um, the member nations uh, realized that they need to make their processes even robust and incorporated the other kind of risk we have in the banking institutions. So Basel II came with the three additional basically requirements, which is the capital risk, operational risk, and market risk. Capital risk is focusing on credit risk, which we have already seen. It's in already incorporated in uh, Basel I. Alongside, it has liquidity risk. It may have some uh, geopolitical risk as well, and it can have business risk market volatility, etc. Operational risk. What is operational risk? It's basically assessing the how the organization functions. We may have, for example, insider trading uh, or like uh, AML, the anti-money laundering, or there may be some systematic errors in the system, how how end-to-end -end flow works within the bank, or it may be some other issues which may hinder the operations of the bank. This is hard to quantify. However, uh, Basel has put together certain guidelines um, to basically quantify it and assess it and improve the process um, as banks go forward. Then the third type of risk introduced in the Basel II is market risk. So market risk is basically the var variance in, in the um, interest rates. It's a volatility, basically dealing with the entire volatility in the market. And it basically helps you to um, calculate the VAR, which is value at risk. So in given um, scenario, uh, what should be the VAR for the bank, or it's a value at risk, uh, the minimum risk what bank would have given the behavior stress scenarios. There are three pillars of the Basel II. The one is minimum capital requirement, which is MCR. This is already incorporated in Basel I as well in the form of CAR. Yep. Then BCBS also added a supervisory review process. Supervisory review process is basically uh, directions for the, or rather recommendations to the central banks to supervise their local banks to ensure that they are following the guidelines, they, they are maintaining the RWAs, etc. The third one is market discipline and disclosure. This is basically to bring more transparency in the banking system and it basically boosts the confidence of their customers and shareholders so the so the people can make uh, informed decisions and the investors can make the informed decisions. This also ensures that uh, local banks should be reporting RWS to central bank, making sure that due diligence is followed. This also looks at, this helps basically the central government to um, look at the risk concentration based on the asset classes, based on the counterparty or which country the counterparty resides, etc. Let's see the Basel 3. Basel 3 was introduced in 2010. The guidelines were introduced in response to financial crisis of 2008. As we all know that uh, in the stress scenarios, we found out that the banks were constrained to, to with the liquid, liquid money and they were not able to fulfill the customer's requirement. And the, the lot of banks had to go bankrupt because they didn't have uh, enough capital to make it running. So in this, uh, what BCBS did, uh, they added 2.5% of conservative buffer on top of the 8% CAR. So the CAR became 10.5%. Also, they 
came up with two critical reports. One is uh, LCR, one is NSFR, basically to ensure that banks are able to serve uh, or b basically they are able to serve the customers in the short term. So liquidity coverage ratio looks at the 30 days uh, scenario. However, NSFR is for the long term. Also, uh, Basel III has added a counterparty credit risk, basically ensuring that uh, uh, all the counterparties get the right credit risk and based on that, the RW is calculated. For example, one counterparty may have a very bad rating which may not be returning back the funds or fulfilling the settlement requirements on time. Uh, so. These are rated by the private agencies as well, and it's consumed um, by the banks. And based on that, they basically value the um, overall uh, trade valuation they do. Uh, they put, along with other parameters, they put it in other, their valuation system. The third one is market risk framework. So Basel III also updates the market, market risk framework to address market risk in trading activities. And it also emphasizes on standard approach and their internal bank can go for an internal model. Uh, in, instead of a standard model, they can have their own internal model. And uh, to assess the, the trade or assess the counterparty and do the valuation, however, they need to basically do the back testing in order to uh, ensure it to the central bank that this model is effectively working with the historical data, right? So that tend to work in the future as well, right? So instead of uh, forcing the standard model, uh, BCBS Basel has basically given flexibility to the organizations. They can go for their own uh, customized model. However, that needs to be working well with the uh, past data in order to uh, ensure that it, it, it will work in the future as well. All right. Uh, I hope you like this and I try to put it together for you. And if you like, please like, share and subscribe and uh, happy learning.